So um, I live in Rochester, New York, and so um, very excited to be here. And I've waited a very long time um, for this moment simply because I got my degree in existential philosophy from Sea of Boulder, and I'm originally from Denver. And whether you're working on interoperability and blockchain, or you're actually um, a, a student trying to find someone to sit with you at the lunch table, everything really is about identity and belonging. And so what I came to talk to you a little bit about today was uh, the power of your voice, especially because of social media. And uh, the interface I care the most about is the interface between you and you. A lot of people aren't really talking about that, but I think our own individual identity is under attack. And, uh, and I am hopeful that there's maybe two or three things that you will get from me in this short time that will allow you more clarity on who you are and how you can protect yourself in the midst of all this, um, I'll call it macro seduction. So we'll call it uh, social media as a, as a platform strategy, and uh, this is about mindset. Don't worry about notes. Anyone that would like slides, be sure to just give me your card and I'll make sure that you get them, because I want you to really focus on the content and not on you know capturing it. Okay, and also how you feel when you hear what I have to say. Um, so, I work with um, a product that is called Interplay that ha helped people at Apple that did not have MBAs learn how to sell because uh, the uh, platform sale in, in some of the larger companies really requires people have an MBA and often people in sales do not. So I want to share with you how I started tracking in 2002. If you notice this, the assets of Apple were 4.5 billion in tangible assets and less than 1 billion in intangible assets, right? And what I'm gonna show you right now as I did this the last time in January, where you can see the shift that um, out, of, um, out of all of the, the um, $737 billion worth of Apple, actually less than a sixth of it is tangible assets. And the, primarily most of it is intangible assets, right? So I talk about intangible assets, what is that? that is, Organizational capital, okay? All of you don't need a title to impact organizational capital inside of your organization because it's the, it's the systems, tools, processes, leadership practices, cultural values. The reason I start with this is that I live in, in Rochester, which is fairly manufacturing, and a lot of people there don't think that you actually need to think globally because they sell locally. And every supply chain is global, and if you have an IP address, you're global. And I just really want you to understand that, that every single one of you has a significant way to contribute to the organizational capital of your business. And a lot of it has to do with your voice and how you choose to use it. So before anyone hires you, they're gonna look you up online to leave, uh, you know, you want you to leave a digital trail of breadcrumbs. And it's amazing even today, the people that I try and find on Twitter and, and LinkedIn, um, they're not yet using it in a way that they're actually clear that they're actually an asset, always an asset. Does that make sense? So in LinkedIn, there are 500 million people in the room, right? On Twitter, there are 321 people, 321 million people in the room, right? And so, you know, it's so important that we really understand how we use our voice on LinkedIn and Twitter, and it isn't just for marketing departments, and it isn't just for CEOs. Everyone is looking for talent, right? And everyone's looking for a place to belong. And so this is what I hope to share with you here. Um, and uh, there's not enough time, but I think a lot of people think that social media really is just about sending out tweets and sending out messages. But I want you to know that really participating Clearing your voice and, and really under, understanding yourself as an organizational asset requires all of these elements, you know, advising, architecture, analysts, who's the recipient, the distributor, the producer. There's so much, and I almost feel like I want to legitimize some of these social media strategies because so many people are just using them in ways that I think are abusive rather than ways that are informative and useful. And so, um, have you heard the term push versus pull? Yeah. Okay. So I want you to think of yourself as a lighthouse. That if in fact you stand still and you absolutely have clarity in what you're pulsing, the right types of opportunities, the right types of people 
and the right types of information will come to you. It's just a matter of realizing that we're in a pull game, not a push game. It isn't so much what you have to share, it's who you are and how clear you're standing still and then anything that does come through you as a filter, but it really resonates with who you are. So, um, have many of you heard of Simon Sinek? Okay, so most of you have, excellent. Um, he has a TED talk if, about why and it is literally something that I have all of my clients watch at least once a month because it's just that repetition is really great. So people don't really care what you do, they care why you do it. Right. And this is a picture, I have three children, um, and this is for one of my, my eldest, and when she was 10, I, I wrote for, I drew for her, because one is that she's a soccer player, and I love soccer because it's an international sport. I don't want to hurt you because I'm about to use my hands. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, so in terms of being a lighthouse, what you have to realize is that we are complex people, right? We're not like algorithms that you can put things in. We're much more complex than that. We have ideas, values, goals, and fears, and then you throw in some sugar, and then you throw in some caffeine, right? And so um, what many people don't realize is that the word to kill um, is a Greek word that means, it, it, the side is, a, is part of a Greek word that means to kill. So homicide is I actually kill someone else. Suicide is I kill myself, right? And to decide means to kill all other possibilities. So when you make a choice, it's a decision. And that's one of the greatest things about in the, the pull economy, is that when you make a choice, you're actually making a decision. And, and so the issue today is not information overload, it's filter failure. And so to help support you in actually being a lighthouse and really understanding your filters, I have um, two tools. One is as a strategy. Um, it doesn't matter what your product is. What matters is actually how you're going to market. Because how you go to market is a strategy that probably will not change. What you sell probably will change. So from a business perspective, I ask people to choose only three out of these strategies. Right? So there's innovation, premium, synergy, cost, know-how, delivery, velocity, and adaptability. Oftentimes, I'll have people that want to work with me and they say, oh, well, we have a delivery and innovation strategy. Right? I'm like, no way. Can't do that. Because delivery is something that you do often and can create efficiencies of scale, and innovation is something that's never been done. And so this is really kind of a great um, to think about how, how do you have competing strategies. <coughs> but this is the next slide is the one that's more important to you, is the idea of what do you want to leave in your wake? How will you decide how to be a lighthouse personally and what to choose? And I'd say the same thing, I believe in triads, and Tesla believes in threes and nines and, and sixes, so let's go with that, is that out of this complete list, if you think about your legacy and choose it early, you can actually help simplify how it is that you're a lighthouse. So I ask people to take this list and actually just to choose three that you think are part of who you are and what you want to leave, be it your family, be it your community, or be it your team. And what ends up happening is then you will find articles in that. Like, is there, Tammy, can I ask you? Sure. Is there a certain word here that really resonates as part of something that's useful or something that you like? Well, authenticity is a very major factor in how I run my business. Fantastic. So, so if authenticity is one of her words, then it, on Wired Magazine, in Fast Company Magazine, in a Harvard Business Review, in, in MIT, the Sloan, there's so many different things. She can actually find a lot of articles about how to be authentic. And in so doing, if she continues to choose that and maybe two other words and make sure that everything that comes through her LinkedIn or her Twitter exemplifies authenticity, it will allow her not only to practice it more because it's in her mind, but also allows people that look at her stream to actually see how important that value is to her, right? So I think most people really are excited but overwhelmed to participate. And if you can think of actually keeping it to three identity words and then allow yourself to study those words, read books of those words, find thought leaders and influencers in those words, it changes you. It actually raises your self-esteem 
and it actually has you even more impeccable with what it, you know, whatever it is that, that you, you deeply care about. Um, so my, mine, um, what you can do is you can, this is kind of on steroids, right, is that once you choose your three words, you can then really determine who they are because authenticity to Tammy might be different for me. We might describe it differently, right? So I'd ask you to choose your three identity words and then codify them so that you have a way to show an image and ways to describe it, right? And so um, ever since 2005, I write in my journal once a week. And I, I share where I have been resilient, where I've been responsive, where I've been reflective. And then I have a delta, which isn't red pen, isn't that I suck, it's that where am I, where am I going to practice it? Because I know that my own identity relies on me practicing these core characteristics. Um, I'm not as great as I want to be, but I'm better than I would have been had it not been part of my practice, right? Mm -hmm. so, so naming, claiming, and then actually exploding, and then practicing are really important ways to uh, exemplify your own leadership identity. And I think in the time that we have, I think that's, that's it. Thank you.